City police have enacted new rules for stop and frisk. NYPD has given its officers some new step-by-step -step instructions on how to conduct stop and frisk, as well as when it should be applied. The updated rules explain the cops can't stop and frisk people for merely gestures, such as reaching for their waistband or acting nervous, or for being in a high crime area. Those were reasons that were allowed in the past. The cops are also being barred from stopping people because of the race or if the person, quote, matches a generalized description of a crime suspect, such as an 18 to 25 year old black male, end quote. Here to weigh in on that from New York is Dante Berry with Million Hoodies for Justice. Dante, good to have you here. Uh, does this new process actually change anything about the constitutional problems associated with stop and frisk? You know, the new process just continues to perpetuate discriminatory policing. Um, and I think right here is just a, is a further, further desire for uh, Bill de Blasio and others to work, work towards passing the Right to Know Act so that we can guarantee that the interactions between police officers and the communities of color uh, that are being often profiled and harassed um, are, are ones that are of, of, of de-escalation. De I mean, I think just from the conversation you just had um, earlier around, around Ferguson report, um, the very same type of, of incidents that are happening in Ferguson is happening in New York City. Um, Ferguson's everywhere. So I think when we look at, when we look at the, the issue of stop and frisk here, um, it's ultimately getting back to this heart of discriminatory policing. You know, one of the uh, new policies here that says stop and frisk must be based on, quote, more than a mere suspicion or a hunch, end quote. That doesn't mean there must be evidence of a crime or even reasonable suspicion. The fact that it seems like they're leaving a lot of room here between a lawful search and the stop and frisk of old. Am I missing something? No, I don't. I don't think so. And again, I think I think it, we're we're all there's like an overall larger question around who's criminalized in, the, in this country, and I think specifically who's criminalized in New York City, right? And that's also that also lifts up some of the broken windows policing that's happening all across this country, in which the person um, that I wear this shirt in rem remembrance of, I can't breathe. Eric Gardner is a victim of, right? So I think when when we look at who is criminalized or who's criminalized and what is criminalized, what is being criminalized or what's deemed criminal, um, I think. It goes back to this heart that we need to end of uh, an end of discriminatory policing. Discriminatory policing is an interesting term because uh, when we did see uh, shortly after the the execution style murder of those two police officers in New York, and then the union said, "Hey, you know what? We're going to back off, and we're only going to arrest people when absolutely necessary." At, at, at the end of the day. Police officers should only be arresting people when absolutely necessary. I mean, the fact that they even did this as a form of protest and it didn't strike people as odd, it didn't strike people as being unconstitutional to say, well, now we're going to lay off and now that we're okay with things, we're going to step back up this process again. Again, discriminatory policing, deriving revenue from people because we know the city's now short something like $10 million. At what point mm -hmm. does, do the citizens of that city say, we are going to take charge of what we expect from police instead of the other way around? Oh, it's happening right now. Um, there's a larger conversation, specifically in New York City, um, but it's also being, uh, being uh, led across the country as well around this ultimate fundamental question, what is the purpose of police? Like, what is the purpose of policing itself? So right now, Bill Bratton and, and city, some city council members are proposing an extra 1,000 new NYPD officers in the city. And that's going to co cost total about $90, 000, $90 million to $120 million. And that's in response to declining crime and a response to the protests that have been happening um, and showing up with machine, machine and, uh, and assault rifles. So I think when we, when we ask this question of like what, what's happening, what, what are people doing, right now folks are organizing and saying that we need safety beyond policing. Uh, we need to look at how the, the communities that are most often policed and over-policed and hyper-policed uh, that are also affected by crime and how their decline is, uh, crime is declining, how do we uplift those communities with not just more police, but with more opportunities to invest in those communities like health, affordable housing and having good transportation and having a good, good education uh, for our young people. So I think when we, when we look at what, what people are doing is really reclaiming this, this narrative around public safety. When, when folks close, if, you fo if folks close their eyes right now and think for one second about what makes you feel safe, guarantee you that police are not the thing that comes up to your mind. If I, the things that make me feel safe is having a, having a safe place to go home, having, having a bed, having food, those necessities that really ground us and keep us rooted in everyday life.
I do think, though, as I said with uh, my last guest, Matthew Fogg, I, I think a lot of that is generational, that generationally younger people say, I don't perceive police officers as being a source of protection. But people over the age of 40 or 45 or 50 years old would say, yeah, absolutely. When they, you say to them safety, they would say police because there is a shifting dynamic in terms of those, the function of police and, and really their role in society, especially being used as revenue derivers. Got about 30 seconds left. I'll give you the last word. Absolutely. I, I think when, when if, if folks want to learn more about what we're doing in, the, in New York City, you can go to safetybeyondpolicing.com and you can find out more. <clears throat> also, specifically, we're looking at the ways that militarized policing um, is impacting communities of color. Um, and you can check that out at millionhoodies.org as well. All right, Dante Berry with Million Hoodies for Justice. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.